What's up, wrestling fans? We got Monday Night Raw tonight. Are you ready? Are oh, you ready? Come on. You know you're ready for Raw tonight. If you're ready for Raw tonight, you're going to hit that sub button down below. You're going to hit that like button, and then you're going to stroke one of your friends off. Uh, Dolph Ziggler, and we're going to start with this. We're going to start with Dolph Ziggler and Ryback getting a little bit of a beef. But remember, remember for $9.99 a month, Ryback will help you be a positive person. He'll help you by showing you how to death threat Vince McMahon, by attacking all of his former co-workers. And Ryback will also help you become a better person by threatening people you used to be friends with that you're going to get them fired from their jobs and workplaces. Remember, Ryback can teach you how to be positive. But if you're not positive enough, he may wish you die in a pit of spikes after telling you to be a good person. For all those reasons, Ryback and Dolph Ziggler should probably not be in a fight, but you know Ryback. It started when Ziggler posted a picture from his days as an all-American amateur wrestler, writes WrestlingInc.com and Say Mohan. Si- is Cy Mo- Moen? I don't even know how to say that. Anyway, I'm reading from his article. But you should go check it out. Article link down below to WrestlingInc.com. Uh, we all saw this go down on Twitter, though, and I looked at WrestleZone a couple other places, too. But Wrestling Inc. sums it up the best. Uh, and and uh, basically criticized uh, criticizes Dolph Ziggler. Of course, right? You know, Ziggler posts a picture from his days as, as, as a wrestler, you know, a real or amateur wrestler. Ryback then tweets... Bridges before bitches while responding to the pitchers. So for no reason, uh, Ryback takes a shot at Dolph Ziggler. Once again, Ryback starts this. The guy who tells you how to be a positive, I'll tell you how to be a motivational speaker, and I'm going to tell you how to be positive. And for $9.99, you're going to get that from me. And I know people say that like I'm fake, that I'm, I'm actually a piece of shit, but that's not true uh, because I want your money because I said so. ha. <laughs> Uh, never never would come on my show, never would mend fences with me, never would allow me on his show, even under a fake name. He's afraid to confront me verbally, uh, but he tells me i got to be positive and he'll kill me in a pit of spikes. And he, t- and he says he'll get Pat Buck fired from his job. The guy, he wishes Vince McMahon was dead. Like, he'd be better if Vince was dead so the wrestling world would be better, which, you know, a lot of people say that, but the fact of the matter is you go around preaching that you're some positive guy. And it's just like, it's just the guy. I mean, we have video and video and example and example. The guy is a psycho. Listen, I appreciate a good psycho. I'm a psycho. I appreciate the psychoticness of Ryback is what I'm trying to say. Just, but just, but the fact that you make a living, you know, saying like, hey, but I'll teach you how to be positive for nine ninety nine a month. I mean, it's just, it, that's, I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Um, Ryback then mocked Dolph Ziggler as a Shawn Michaels wannabe, uh, thus putting down Right, uh, Dolph Ziggler. So he puts he puts down Dolph Ziggler, like yeah, you're actually a loser. Like basically, you know, it's just like, dude, what are you doing? The guy is like, what, is this what a positive person does? Seeks out a guy who said something about his amateur wrestling background, and then goes, "You're a loser." <laughs> like it's just, just weird. Let's just play some of the Last Ryback time you stuff. Talked to Pat, like, I uh, sent him a message and just personally let him know the other day that I'm going to personally get him fired when I'm fucking healthy if he doesn't get fired before that and enjoy the ride short term that he's up there. So, And I know the, uh, his buddy wants to say you're supposed to be a motivational seeker or, uh, speaker and be positive. I am. But there, I, I'm also, I don't put up with little bitches. And I-, I mean, I guess Dolph Ziggler's a little bitch. You know, I don't put up with little bitches. He is little, so maybe that's what it is about Ryback. Here's some of the tweets. I never heard those chants. Was too busy listening. This is after they went back and forth. Um, Ziggler eventually posted a sad face emoji and stopped responding to Ryback. See that? It's just Ryback trying to bully Ziggler, being jealous of Ziggler and being being a dickhead to Ziggler. Probably because Ziggler did do something to Ryback in the past. You know, what I mean, I, I don't I don't deny that probably Ziggler may have been a little bit of a prick. To, to, to Ryback, he might have been. So Ryback is going after him forever till the end of time, right? Which is fine, but it's like, don't pretend to be a motivational guy. I mean, it's just it's just one thing after another. Ryback, we would get along so well, because I'm a bitter son of a bitch, too. The difference is that I'm not doing motivational speaking. Uh, just I, The guy is ridiculous. I can't even... It's hilarious at this point. The... Who the hell pays $10 for Ryback to teach them how to be a positive person? 
Because, I mean, like, this is weird. Anyway, uh, the NXT Tag Team Champions um, requested their release multiple times. We're talking about FTR, who are now the AEW Tag Team Champions, or were the AEW Tag Team Champions, until the Young Bucks defeated them the other night. They basically, in this new interview, talked about the fact that they were just, the WWE went after them hardcore. Like, they went after these guys crazy hard. But we all knew that. The WWE and NXT, dude, they offered them more money to be with them than AEW. FTR took a pay cut to be in AEW. They took prosperity over profit. I mean, that's that's an amazing thing, man. They took prosperity over profit. They said, you know what? Those de- that extra two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars is negligible compared to our mental health. That's crazy. That is, but it's understandable, man. When you're in a pressure environment like that, you can understand it. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stuff going on there. You know, you could do your own thing and make less money. I mean, look at look at you know, it's it's very. I've seen it. You know what I mean? I've got friends that don't aren't on the show anymore because they're like, Joe, the show is just so you know grinding and stuff like that. You know, I'd rather just do my own little thing and get some couple bucks here or there. It's the same type of thing. It's understandable. You know what I mean? I can understand why FTR did that. I can understand why some people have done that with me because it's like, man, the shows and the grinding and you know the big atmosphere. I can you know do 70% of what I do with you by myself but not have to make, you know what I mean? There's a lot of people like that. So I understand that. I've left jobs before too because I'm like, my mental health, dude, I'm going to lose my mind at this place. And even though I've I've got health insurance and I've got all these other things, I got to go. And that was years ago, man, back when I worked at this other place. Um years ago. Now I wish I never lost my last job because it was such a great job with great insurance. Uh but these guys, man, you can see what's going on, you know, I can understand that. Mick Foley is talking about the Undertaker's mystique with wrestling Inc as well. Um I'll talk about that later on. Mick Foley's uh, got a good thing there. He did get some heat. He did get some heat. I got an incoming phone call right now from uh, somebody. Hang on a second. Let me just uh, figure out. Oh, my God. It's the police calling me. Uh, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm back. What's up, everybody? Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Um, What was I going to say? Shit, what was I talking about? Now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. AEW. Uh, first of all, AEW sent me beautiful pictures of... Uh, full gear the other night thank you to them uh what a beautiful great photographer great photographs i'd love to share some of them on twitter we'll probably use some of them on the website or something like that aw games is a big thing uh aw wants to remind everybody this is a crazy interesting thing tell me what you guys think about it join us for aew games a special event tuesday november 10th it's live on youtube at 6 p.m eastern time and you guys can subscribe to youtube.com slash AEW Games. It's a separate it's a separate channel that you gotta subscribe to. Uh, youtube.com slash AEW Games. This is looking super interesting. So I wonder what that's gonna be. Wonder what it's gonna be about. Let's take a look at the preview that they do have up, uh, because this is something people have mentioned to me. AEW presents AEW Games, Tuesday, November 10th, AEW Games 1.0, YouTube.com slash AEW Games, a special event, Tuesday at 6 p.m., live on YouTube. Don't miss the event the world's talking about. You like that? I mean, come on, I'm pumped about it. I'm pumped about it. What a lariat! AEW, I'm super pumped, man. AEW Games, 6 p.m. on YouTube. We can all watch November 10th, 11, 10, 20. Don't forget it. It's tomorrow. Come on. It's a big deal. It's a real big deal, and I'm happy about it. Aren't you? I'm fired up, bro. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. I'm going to be in the chat probably freaking out with all you guys. There's a website. Dude, there's a, they got their own YouTube, too. Uh, so, yes, once again, live. 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Subscribe to the channel. Tell them Joe Cronin sent you. Tell them Joe Cronin sent you. Comments, chats, Twitters, everywhere. Tell them about this video. Give them love. YouTube.com slash AEW Games. You can tweet them on their Twitter. Twitter.com slash AEW Games. And uh, looking forward to it. 
Uh, asked you guys if you guys had any questions for me. Also, by the way, on this day, did you guys know this? I didn't even think about this. On this day, 23 years ago, Vince McMahon, it went down, baby. The Montreal screw job. There's a photo of Vince McMahon with the black eye following the 1997 Survivor Series. We all remember where we were. Actually, I remember where I was. I didn't see it and had to get the tape from a friend the next day. My friend at school uh, taped it for me, and I found out about everything. So it was ruined for me. I didn't get that shock of watching it live and being like, what the hell is going on? Instead, what ended up happening was my buddy recorded it for me because sometimes we would do that. Oh, your parents bought it for you? You record it for me, and then I watch it. Oh, my parents bought mine. I give you the tape, and you watch whatever. You, you know if you're older. Um, and, dude, so I ended up watching Monday Night Raw before I ever saw the tape because he didn't bring the tape to school. So I saw it the day after that. So I, I saw Raw that night and then watched the tape Tuesday. And it was super, like, I definitely missed out by seeing it that way. Survivor Series was one of the few pay-per-views I missed live. And so uh, that was a bummer, man. I think I'd not done my chores or something or like and I hadn't earned something. And, you know, I, I, we didn't have the money, I guess, too. It was, you know, it was a lot of money. So, you know, that it is what it is. Um, there were several WWE employees released uh, recently. Uh, so this just came out today. There's a lot of news on this. So this is my uh, little wrap up here. Hit that like button down below. Hit the sub button and leave a comment for me if you'd like to. And if you really want to support what I do, make sure you guys go to Patreon. I can't tell you enough, man. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. There's so many shows and so many things we're doing on Patreon that you can't hear here on YouTube. So please support the show, what me and Jake do, and everything else, and become a patron at least. You get 30 hours of bonus content, uh, patreon.com slash Joe Show. Former WWE ring announcer Tony Chimmel, patreon.com slash Joe Show. By the way, um, Mr. Alex made, Alex Jones made a little call into an alien, and that's going to be uh, available for everybody. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's a great call. I had a great time. Former WWE ring announcer Tony Chimmel and several other employees have been released by the company. There were several employees released by WWE this past Friday. It's all coming according to PW Insider. Most of the cuts were uh, logistical and behind-the-scenes staff that were working for the company at the headquarters. About 10 to 15 employees were let go. Tony Chimmel is the most well-known name that was released. He had been with the company since 1991. Rated R Superstar. Uh, and another name that came as a bit of a surprise, they say, was uh, Derek Castleman. He had been the WWE's director of venue merchandise for remote operations, had been with the company since 1993. Guys like Mike Chioda and, um, you know, the uh, composer for the WWE. Um, oh, God, what's his name? <laughs> God, I can't think of his name. He's a legend. we got to remember his name. Um, oh my Christ, Jim Johnston. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Jim Johnston's a legend. I can't remember his name. Jim Johnston, just such a legend. Um, and they'd released him when they released him. I was kind of like, wow, but I kind of expected that one in a way, you know what I mean? It was an old vibe that he had. He was there for years. It was like, all right, we're going to do something different with the music. But now that CFO isn't there, man, you almost wish you had the guy back. Um, but listen, Jim Johnston got released. Then Mike Chioda, th 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 those are the biggest surprises ever to me. I don't think anything will ever, you know, surprise me any more than those two guys being released. I mean, to me, that was th those were bombshells and those were crazy, crazy, crazy firings um, or releases. You know, I mean, I, they'd been there for years. You know, you, not everybody keeps their job forever, but just, um, you know, kind of crazy. Yo, Lars Sullivan's on the phone. Hey, Lars, uh, what's up, brother? How you doing? How you feeling, Lars Sullivan? How you doing, brother? I could do this. Oh my God, bro. What the hell's going on there? My name's Joe Cronin. This is the Joe Cronin Show. What'd you think about all the wrestling uh, news and the wrestling talk? Leave it in the comments down below. Don't be a butt hurt, butt pirate, butt plug. Uh, hit the like button and stick that thumb. Go ahead right now. And I want you to stick that thumb up my ass now. 
some videos are going to pop up that you probably didn't see because YouTube doesn't want you to see what I do. Just keep binging me. Binge me like a bad drug. Okay? Hit me up on Twitter at JCS Commentary and let's fight the demons together. Follow me on Instagram, Instagram.com slash Joe Cronin Show. But most of all, hit up my Patreon. Become a $5 patron if you can. And become a producer if you can. The producer list is going out tomorrow or today, possibly today. So shout out to the producers. By the way, we just hit. We just hit. Austin316 says I have that many patrons. Hell yeah. Let's shout out the new patrons as we get out of here. Patreon.com slash Joe Cronin Show. Download the Patreon app for free on your phone or use the desktop or whatever you want to do. It's Dirk D. It's the Dab God 12. It's Broken Lion. He's back. The Broken One. Broken Lion. Mr. Kyle Rennard also became a patron this week again. Long time, guys. They're back again. Also, special shout out to the new $25 producer. His name is Firebird87. Firebird. Here's some other videos that you might have missed. Watch them or the devil will come to your house and eat your anus. <laughs>